It's September. August saw the biggest Treasury rally since 2008. The President is escalating the trade situation. Hong Kong is on a knife edge. Brexit is still a story that we're watching. But the trade narrative seems to be the dominant theme. If I've just seen that massive rally in Treasuries, do I believe that I should be exiting those positions and taking profits? Or do you think actually September is going to deliver more of the same? Well, I think we're in a highly fragile and uncertain environment. If you look at measures of investor positioning, investor sentiment, people are sort of largely sitting on their hands. So we, you, you can get, I think, still big moves. You look at uh, volatility measures like the Move Index, which is a measure of volatility in, in the Treasury market. That looks quite ele elevated. I, I think the scope for a continuation of the kind of extreme moves we've seen in bond markets continues. And, and you know, if you have uh, data and markets continuing to deteriorate, then as long as the Fed and other central banks don't play ball and don't uh, give in to, to market pressures in the way that the market clearly wants them to, the risk is that curves remain inverted and, and yields can rally further. Does trade remain the central narrative in all of this? Does trade remain the central focus? I, I think it's a key focus. It's, it is something that is clearly undermining confidence. It's clearly undermining uh, you know, manufacturing. It's clearly um, a, a, a weak point in, in the global economy. And it's raising, I, I mean, it's behind, I think, a lot of the fears that perhaps the global economy is, is about to slip into or is slipping into recession. Um, so as long as the ante continues to be upped, and we saw, as you saw, the extension of tariffs or an increase in tariffs over the weekend, um, I think it is going to prey on, on investors' minds and on market minds. So what do I do? I'm a, I'm a portfolio manager. It's the, first of September, it's the 2nd of September, 1st of September. I'm just getting back to the office. Kind of, what does the landscape look like in front of me? What do you see? So I, th I think it is highly uncertain. It's not a time, I think, to be a p particularly to be a hero. We are running in terms of active risk, probably uh, towards the lowest level of active risk that we've run in this entire economic expansion. We can see, you know, uh, a decent probability that central banks will uh, extend the cycle growth will achieve a soft landing, maybe we get some resolution of trade and so on. That's, that's a reasonable probability. But on the other hand, you can't dismiss the recession risk. It's maybe one in three now. And so you've got very binary outcomes for markets. If you have soft landing and recovery, equities carry on rallying, the bull market extends. If you go into recession, um, you get a, a nasty bear market. So why take, you know, why be a hero? Why not just at the moment focus more on... So what does on a safe portfolio look like in this scenario? A safe portfolio for us is focusing on steady income generators where they're available, um, looking to have some equity exposure, probably not running too much duration because I think that, you know, the, the, the bond market clearly is betting quite heavily now on the probability of recession, probably more than is, is reasonable. Um, but the equity market actually also looks fairly complacent. So we're running um, relatively low risk overall. We're running some exposure in selective high quality decent yielding equities and in um, sort of higher quality corporate bonds uh, and, and generally looking at bottom up opportunities rather than trying to make big asset allocation calls. Was it a surprise to you that, that equities didn't do worse last month? I, I think they, I, the S&P was down fairly, like it's just points away still from record highs. Yeah, I mean, definitely if you look at, at the equity market, it's, it, I think it is holding up better. It is pricing in a, a bigger probability that actually the Fed and other central banks will save the day, growth will be OK. A lot of that, I think, seems to be that people have are not taking much uh, risk at the moment. And, and typically, equity markets have their big problems when everyone is euphoric. If everyone's a little bit cautious, you know, it, unless something dramatic changes and we've had a lot of noise but we haven't had anything that's particularly changed the debate I think between you know is this an ongoing recovery and uh, or expansion and bull market or is it mm. the beginning of something worse you know there were, nothing was particularly decisive in in um, in August uh, and so I think the market is able to maintain this sort of messy range uh, and, and so you, uh, you you need some catalyst to break out of that either you need um, the complacency to turn out to be right that you know um, the Fed will ease, uh, are easing enough, growth is actually going to stabilise and recover, or you need some more information that's going to tell you actually um, things are about to get much worse.
Powell speaks on Friday. He's in Switzerland. He's in Zurich. Um, Jackson Hole, he didn't kind of disabuse the market of the idea that, that we're going to see sort of further rate cuts coming down the pike from the Fed. That'll keep the president happy, probably not as happy um, as he'd like to be. But nevertheless, I, the president is upping the ante in the trade narrative. The Fed probably is going to respond. Do you think the market's right to be as aggressive in Fed pricing as it is? Well, no, probably not. I mean, the Fed is, is um, behaving as though everything is just about OK. They're in risk management mode. The risks they see are linked to trade and, and sort of overseas growth. But as far as they can see, the US economy is holding up quite well. So there's no real sense of urgency from the Fed. And that's just keeping the pressure on the yield curve. The market is saying, you're missing something. You know, we're really, we're, we're really nervous. The bond market's saying that. The Fed is saying, actually, we don't see that. And part of the problem, I think, for Powell is you, if you listen to different members of his uh, FOMC committee, they're pretty split. There are some people yep. who really don't want to ease any more. There are some who want to take out more insurance. Um, they've got the pressure from the so president. How, so how important is the payroll going to be on Friday? I, the problem with any one data point, I mean, the Fed, I think, look at trends. They look at sure. developments. So unless it's a massive outlier in one direction or another, I think they will just add it into, into the information that they have available. And at the moment, that is, there isn't really that much evidence that the U.S. consumer, the U.S. Yeah. labor market is, is struggling. It's doing okay. It's slowed a bit, but it's, not, not, it's, it, it's, it's doing pretty well.